I was asked how I came to Krishna consciousness and I joined when I was 17 years old and I ran away from home. Um, I grew up in a abusive type of family and since I was about four or five years old what I can recall is I was always searching for the devotees really. I was always searching for some for something that wasn't there in the atmosphere. So I waited and I was waiting and waiting and um, even in high school I used to take out huge amounts of books from the library and look and look through all the books to see I couldn't find what I was looking for. So at that time in high school, I used to um, listen to the Beatles um, music, George Harrison. And I had a picture of Krishna and Arjun on my wall. I had a picture of Krishna and Arjun on my wall. and. Um, I memorized all the music. I, I was listening to you know, Living in the Material World and um, My Sweet Lord, all this type of music. And um, I actually didn't know what Krishna, the picture of Krishna and Arjun was, but, but I liked it. So um, some altercation happened in my family, and um, I took my mother's car actually, and um, I packed up all my things and I was going to drive to the airport. I did drive to the airport. And we lived right on the border of Illinois and Indiana. And um, so my plan was to drive to the Chicago airport. And the point is, is there was one Beatles album called Abbey Road. And inside there was a, um, a fold-out picture of um, Bhaktivedanta Manor. At that time, I did not know that was a manor. But that is where I wanted to go. That's where I was going. <laughs> So that is a place I'm going to. So, um, so when I left, that's what I had in my mind. So um, we were living in Indiana, and um, it was one mile from the border. And when I left home, I, I took my mother's car without permission. We had some argument, and um, the police were actually passing me at the same time that I was going down our street. and. Um, Somehow I, I made it to the airport and I went to California alone by myself. And um, I was in the airport. I was sitting in the airport waiting to go to England. And then the devotees came up to me and they gave me a Bhakti Gaudi magazine. And um, so I was looking at it. And about a half an hour later, one of the devotees uh, came and she was a very sales type of person and she kept moving her hand like this and I had the Back to God had magazine open to Srila Prabhupada and there was like a full page of Srila Prabhupada's picture and she was she was talking to me about this man and do I want to meet this man so I looked at the picture of Prabhupada and um, I, really, I was really analyzing and I said yes I want to meet him you know like that so it ended up to be that um, I met the Sankirtan party and I met the Sankirtan leader and the man she was talking about was the Sankirtan leader. It was not Srila Prabhupada, but I did go to the temple and I joined the Berkeley temple and um, I stayed in the Tulsi house um, uh, for the first few days and uh, I met Vaibhavi and Churu Prabhu and Bhavalasva, Bhaktadas were at the temple then. And, um, Bhai Bobby said to me, um, this is Krishna, he's blue, this is God, you know, and she taught me how to chant Tapa, and I said, oh, okay. So, when I met the devotees at the airport, finally, after waiting, like, my whole life up to that point, the, this, was the, this was the thing I was waiting for, and it matched exactly what I was looking for. So, um, I just, from inside my heart, you know, I went to the temple, and I joined, and about a week later, I was out in Sankirtan in San Francisco airport. You know, approaching all these really big, tall people, you know, and I was extremely shy, you know, and really a very introverted person. And then, you know, we had to approach them and, you know, speak to them about Krishna. And so, anyway, that was um, that was the start of that. And then um, about Srila Prabhupada, um, I'm trying 
trying to think. Uh, well, one thing is, um, I actually ended up meeting George Harrison uh, because I worked for Fate Studio for some time and I was a, a short term temporary secretary for Bar Garage. And uh, George Harrison came and I got to serve him for Shotham. And for me, like, my hairs were standing on end and I could hardly talk really, but. <laughs> You know, it was very exciting um, because he helped me so much, you know, and that was my impetus to join was, you know, really actually him and his whatever outreach preaching that he was doing. So um, what I can, um, that's basically how I joined, but I just have a couple of things I could say about Shula Prabhupada for just future persons that listen to this, is that um, we distributed books for many years and we went to the airport and we traveled all over America and as the books were coming out we were distributing them and um, so we got to like freshly see all the new like Shumar Bhagavatams because um, I was in Berkeley and then um, I changed and I was in Los Angeles so the BBT was there and all the books were coming out and it was a very exciting period where like I'm seeing all the photos on the wall here at Bhakti Vedanta Hospital of um, oil paintings that actually were being done exactly when I was there, you know, in Los Angeles. And even I knew some of the artists and some of the pictures I got to actually help them with painting them. So it's kind of interesting. Oh, there's such and such a picture. There's such and such. You know, I'm remembering. And um, well. Uh, the thing is, when Srila Prabhupada uh, was not well, uh, Gopal Bhatta was the temple president in Los Angeles, and every day, you know, week after week, and month after month, they always give a report of Srila Prabhupada's condition, and, um, you know, Srila Prabhupada is doing, you know, well today, Srila Prabhupada is, um, you know, not feeling well, you know, every day we would always wait during the morning announcements to hear, you know, Shri Prabhupada's condition. And then after a long time, um, it seemed like a long time, um, one morning, um, um, the Gopal Bhatta people announced that, you know, Shri Prabhupada had left and all the devotees were in, like, in a complete utter and devastation, you know, but completely mortified and completely weeping. You know, um, it would be hard to describe. This is a very shallow understatement and making how um, wretched we actually felt. And um, at, at some point, um, within a few hours of hearing that, I remember being outside um, in front of the Los Angeles Temple. And we all decided to go on Sankraton. At that time, I, I was on the um, Temple Sankraton party with uh, Bhakti Priya, Bhul Bakriti, and uh, Jadarani, uh, Asangi. Uh, even, um, that's where I know Nartaki. I know Nartaki Manaji from the Sankraton party. So the thing is, is that um, we decided to go on a sankirtan, so we went to the airport, and we were upstairs in one of the terminals. There's like a, an escalator that goes upstairs, and then there's a skylight in every terminal, and then each airline had a certain terminal. So the terminal I went to, I think that airline no longer exists. Uh, it's like PSA, but um, we were upstairs distributing, and. Um, you know, also weeping, you know, at the same time, you know, like periodically weeping, feeling, you know, very desolate and, um, you know, and, you know, bring to Shul Prabhupada, you know, like, um, you know, why did you, you know, feeling like, oh, you know, you left me and I'm all alone, you know, like that, and, but in a very, very wretched type of way. And, I remember distributing, and 
I was mentioning about the skylight, and there was, uh, you know, the sums in that whole area. And what happened was, is um, in the midst of when I was distributing, um, there was, I stopped, like there was a, and actually, this is the truth, there was actually a beam of light, a beam of light that came from the skylight and went like into my heart. And Shul Prabhupada said um, to me, I will never leave you like that. And so, uh, that's a true story. So, um, also on Sankirtan, um, around the same time period, um, just some other different amazing things happened. Like one day I, I had not a single flower, not a single book, I had nothing, you know, but I was just going up and talking to people. And um, one person, one man came and he gave like a thousand dollar donation. You know, just, uh, just I was telling him about Krishna consciousness. And he actually gave a thousand dollar donation and a, a couple of months later I saw him again. And he gave another, he gave like fifteen hundred or sixteen hundred dollars. And when we went to send him a set of books, um, at that time um, Rameshwar was the in charge of the temple. But like he, uh, we tried to send him books and there was no address. So it was like some mystical thing that happened. Many different things. But basically, um, the, the line I was supposed to stick with it was how I joined. And then um, I just wanted to tell that one small, small, small thing about Shul Mahapad. Um, there's no estimation of the greatness of what Shul Mahapad has done. And even this year, now in 2014, at the Mayapur Festival, we had Gorpanin. The evidence is thousands of people from all over the world were just chanting Hare Krishna, you know, and dancing, and amazing. And there was more tea of Shil Prabhupada um, there on the altar, um, and he was so happy, he was so pleased. He was just so completely pleased, and it was just an amazing, amazing experience to see that, what um, small thing that, you know, whatever we did, whatever we did to serve Shil Prabhupada, which, you know, we would do anything. We would do anything that if he was, he was pleased in any small way. And, you know, he took us from out of the material world, just, you know, we we're not even very, we're, we were all very, you know, hard, you know, not worthy of, but, you know, he, he grabbed the devotees, you know, different people from all over and engaged us in um, doing the service to spread the Vajrayana Sacred Temple. It's just completely incredible, really. And the long-term effects, it's, you know, only Krishna knows, but it's, the evidence is truly phenomenal. So, anyway, thank you very much.